Have you ever wondered who the first warriors in human history were? Let's step back in time around 5,000 years ago to the cradle of civilization, Mesopotamia. Here, nestled between the Tigris and Euphrates rivers, the ancient Sumerians laid the foundation for what we know today as warfare. As the first known warriors in human history, they were a formidable force to reckon with. The Sumerians were not merely a band of marauders, they were an organized army. They recognized the power of unity and the strategic advantage of coordination. Their military structure was a reflection of their society, hierarchical and disciplined. A warrior was not just a fighter, he was a cog in a well-oiled machine, a testament to the Sumerians' understanding of warfare strategy. Their weapons? Bronze a material that was both accessible and malleable. They crafted spears, swords, and axes. The Sumerian warriors were among the first to understand that a warrior is only as good as his weapon. With bronze in their hands, they were not just men, they were a force of nature. But the dawn of warriors didn't stop in Mesopotamia. Let's take a quick journey down the Nile to the land of the pharaohs. The ancient Egyptians took the concept of warfare to a whole new level. They introduced a game-changer, chariots. Not just a mode of transportation, chariots were mobile battle platforms, allowing warriors to strike with speed and precision. The Egyptians understood that the true power of a warrior did not just lie in his strength, but also in his ability to adapt and innovate. The Sumerian and Egyptian warriors were the trailblazers of their time. They set precedents, established strategies, and paved the way for future generations of warriors. They were the dawn of a new era, an era where strength and strategy went hand in hand. From the Sumerians to the Egyptians, the dawn of warriors set the stage for warfare strategies that would evolve throughout history. Moving forward in time, let's shift our focus to the classical warriors. Hailing from the cradle of Western civilization, the Greek hoplites were a force to be reckoned with. Clad in bronze armor and equipped with round shields, spears, and short swords, these citizen soldiers were the backbone of the city-state's defense. But it wasn't their equipment that set them apart. No, it was their signature battle formation, the phalanx. A wall of shields and spears, the phalanx was an intimidating sight on the battlefield. A testament to the Greeks' innovative tactical thinking. But let's not forget about the Romans. The Roman legionnaires, disciplined and well-trained, were the driving force behind one of the greatest empires the world has ever seen. Organized into large units called legions, these soldiers, armed with the gladius, the pilum, and their iconic rectangular shield, the scutum, were a formidable fighting force. Their disciplined approach to warfare, along with their ability to adapt and learn from their enemies, made the Roman legions an enduring symbol of military might. And then, there were the Spartans. Renowned for their physical prowess and martial skill, the Spartans were trained from a tender age to be soldiers. Spartan boys were taken from their families at the age of seven and put through a rigorous training regimen, a brutal process designed to forge them into the perfect warriors. Their society was built around warfare, and it showed in their performance on the battlefield. Each of these classical warriors, the Greek hoplites, the Roman legionnaires, and the Spartans, brought something unique to the table. Their tactics and strategies, their discipline and training, their dedication to their craft, all played a significant role in shaping the history of their regions. They left a lasting legacy, not only in the annals of warfare, but also in the broader tapestry of human history. Their stories continue to inspire and captivate us, reminding us of the heights humanity can reach when pushed to its limits. The classical warriors, with their unique tactics and strategies, played a significant role in shaping the history of their regions. As we transition into the medieval period, we encounter a new breed of warriors. First, let's set our sights on the Knights of Europe. These armored warriors were far more than mere soldiers. They were members of the noble class, trained from childhood in the arts of war. Their armor was a testament to the technology of the day, a suit of plate or chainmail that could weigh up to 60 pounds. But this armor was not just about protection, it was a status symbol, often adorned with the heraldry of the knight's family. Yet, being a knight was not only about prowess in battle. They were bound by a code of chivalry, a set of moral and social codes that governed their conduct. Chivalry demanded bravery, courtesy, honor, and gallantry towards women. It was a code that transformed these warriors into paragons of virtue, at least in theory. Now, let's journey to the land of the rising sun, Japan. 
Here we meet the samurai, a class of warriors that were as much philosophers as they were fighters. Just like the knights, samurai were also bound by a code known as Bushido, or the way of the warrior. This code stressed loyalty to one's master, self-discipline, respect for the gods, and a sense of personal honor that often led to ritual suicide, known as seppuku, rather than live with disgrace. The samurai were masters of many weapons, but none is more iconic than the katana. This single-edged sword, with its distinctive curvature, was a marvel of metallurgy. Forged in fire and folded countless times, the katana was a weapon of unparalleled sharpness and durability. It was so revered, it was considered part of the samurai's soul. These warriors, bound by honor and duty, left an indelible mark on the annals of warfare. Their legacy can still be seen today in our idealized images of knights in shining armor and samurai with their gleaming katanas, symbols of a time when warfare was not just about victory, but about honor, duty, and the art of the warrior. The advent of gunpowder drastically changed the face of warfare. Imagine the battlefield of yore. Mighty warriors donned in gleaming armor, swords clashing, the air filled with the sounds of metal on metal, and the ground shaking beneath the thundering hooves of war horses. This was the norm until gunpowder made its explosive entrance onto the scene. Suddenly the battlefield was no longer about who had the sharpest sword or the sturdiest shield. It was about who could command the potent power of gunpowder. This shift from traditional warriors to soldiers equipped with firearms was a game changer. And it was a shift that happened relatively quickly, all things considered. Let's take a step back to the 16th century. The Musketeers, not just characters in a famous novel, but real soldiers, were among the first to wield firearms in battle. They were named after their weapon of choice, the musket, which was a long gun that was fired from the shoulder. A single shot from a musket could penetrate even the thickest of armors, rendering traditional defense mechanisms obsolete. But the gunpowder revolution didn't stop there. Fast forward two centuries to the 18th century, and we meet the Redcoats, the British soldiers who were notorious for their bright red uniforms and their deadly, accurate brown vest muskets. These soldiers were a testament to how gunpowder had not only changed the weapons of war, but also the strategies and tactics used in battle. The gunpowder revolution marked a significant turning point in the history of warfare. It wasn't just about the firearms, it was about the shift in mindset, the change in tactics, and the realization that the future of warfare was no longer in the hands of individual warriors, but in the hands of those who could harness the raw, explosive power of gunpowder. The gunpowder revolution marked the end of an era, transforming warfare from a test of personal skill and valor to a game of strategy and firepower. From the Sumerians of Mesopotamia to the Redcoats of Britain, the evolution of warriors is a fascinating journey. We've traced this journey from the earliest days of civilization to the advent of gunpowder, a significant turning point that revolutionized warfare. Let's step back to the dawn of warriors, where our journey began. We explored the Sumerians of Mesopotamia, the world's first warriors who etched their bravery into the annals of history. Their bronze weapons and chariots set the stage for warfare, setting a precedent for future generations. Next, we ventured into the era of the classical warriors. From the disciplined Roman legions with their short swords and large shields to the Greek hoplites, whose phalanx formation was a testament to their strategic genius. These warriors shaped the course of history with their innovative tactics and indomitable spirit. The Middle Ages brought a different breed of warriors, knights in shining armor, samurai with their Bushido code, and the fearsome Mongol horsemen. These warriors were not just fighters, they were symbols of honor, courage, and discipline, embodying the values of their respective societies. Then came the Gunpowder Revolution, a game-changer in warfare. The Redcoats of Britain with their bright uniforms and long muskets were the harbingers of a new era. They symbolized the shift from hand-to-hand -hand combat to long-range warfare, a shift that changed the face of battles forever. In this journey, we've seen the continuous evolution of warfare and the role of warriors. From the bronze weapons of the Sumerians to the gunpowder muskets of the Redcoats, each era brought about changes that were revolutionary in their time. Yet, throughout these changes, the essence of the warrior remained constant. They were always the embodiment of courage, resilience, and the will to survive. So, the next time you think about warriors, remember that they are not just figures from the past. 
but a testament to human resilience, innovation, and the will to survive.